Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft and today I want you to get a little bit of coffee because it might take some time because I will share with you my fountain pen collection, the pocket sized edition. Now there's been some conversation on how do we define fountain pens as pocket size. So what I did was I went and did a little bit of research and I found that there are average sizes to pockets. Interestingly, there's a different size for males and a different size for females. And so for men, the average depth of a pocket would be 9.1 inches. And for women, the average depth of um, pockets would be 5.6 inches. So I'm just going to err on the conservative side and I just go for the women pockets, which are 5.6 inches. Of course, the ones that we find in jeans are something else altogether. So I'm just going to use this as an average that apparently a lot of people use for pockets other than jeans because I don't know what's happening with that. Anyway, let's go ahead and begin. We start with our longest uh, pocket-sized fountain pen, and that would be our Twisby Vac Mini. This is our longest, right? And the Twisby Vac Mini, okay, sorry, I have notes, so you'll hear a little bit of rustling. This was released in 2015. Its nib is steel, very utilitarian. Its body though is made with plastic. It's faceted, so it sort of like has its own um, roll stopper. Its length is about 12.8 centimeters, um, which would be about five inches. It's a vacuum filler, hence just be vac. Mini. There's a longer version, but I have this pocket-sized one. Okay, the next one is our Bennu. So this is a Bennu, okay, and it is the Bennu Minima Black Skull. I got this for my collection because I like the size, it's cigar shape too, and I like the way it writes. It's very sturdy, it's very um, well, it's not very stiff, but it's it's a very good nib. It doesn't have a lot of line variation, but it's very reliable when it comes to writing with it. Now, I'm using the measurements when they're capped because that's when we put them in our pockets. So the Bennu Minima Black, Black Skull or the Bennu Classic Black Skull is about 12.6 centimeters in length or about five inches. It has a number five Schmidt nib. It's stainless steel and it is, its body is made with very high quality resin, acrylic, it has skull patterns, very good to have in your pocket. It doesn't easily scratch, well, at least not for me. Okay, then we have a vintage pen. This is the, let me find it, oh yeah, it is the Pelican 140 Green Stripe. This was released in 1952 and it is a gold nib. Okay, let me just get that out for you. This is always ink for me because I like using flex pens. Um, and it is 12.4 uh, centimeters, 4.87 inches long. It is a piston filler. This is a cartridge converter. So um, you don't need to bring bottles of ink with you. However, if you're gonna use this or this, well, you need to fill it up with uh, from ink bottles. This one, not much of a problem, really good capacity. This one, if you're not gonna use it all the time, I mean, it holds well enough. I sometimes need to fill it up maybe every two weeks. Although, full transparency, I don't bring this around with me. Okay, so the next um, pens are actually very, very similar when it comes to their length. So I'm just going to go ahead and present them to you both. This is your Sailor Pro Gear Slim and your Jinhao 82. 
The Pro Gear Slim that you see in front of you is the Fuki. It comes with a 14 karat gold nib. It is a wonderful writer. And um, yeah, there's, if you're familiar with Sailor, not much to say, um, except that they come up with really pretty colors. This comes from their Solar Term um, collection, 2023 release. I have another Pro Gear Slim. This is the Momo coming from their 2022 seasonal festival releases. Of course, comes with a 14 karat um, gold nib as well. Although, again, full transparency, I don't really put these in my pocket because I don't want anything happening with the gold trim. Okay, and the Jin Hao, I'm, uh, yeah, sometimes I put these in my pocket. Thing with Jin Hao's though, they're not very expensive. Huge price difference between these two. This would set you back about $180 roughly. This would set you back about $7. But there is some sort of fiddling when you get one of these, at least in my experience. I have to put like brass sheets between those tines because they, for some reason, I don't get Jin Hao's that write beautifully off the packaging. The nib for Jin Hao's are just steel nibs, although they look very much like a very pretty nib. They are steel, not that I'm saying they're bad, I'm just saying the ones I get don't tend to write nicely. I have three more of these because they're very pretty and they're not expensive. So of course we tend to get a bit more. So I have four of them. This is the lychee. This is, oh, this is a gift uh, from Corey for me. This is the elderberry. This is the princess jasmine. And you can see really pretty colors. And this one is the cheesecake. Um, for a, okay, sorry for all that noise. Let me just put them back in this jar that I have for them. Otherwise, they'll be everywhere. Okay, so let's move forward. Our next one is the Pilot Mew. This is another vintage pen. In fact, this is a grail pen for me. I was looking for this but not actively so. I was just like hoping I would find one of these in the market and then suddenly someone had it up um, in the market. What makes this quite special? First off, it's a vintage pen. It was released in 1973 um, and it is a design that is inspired by quill pens. As you can see, you can't even, I mean, some people say it's an integrated nib. It's not really an integrated nib because it actually comes in the same body like it's just one continuous piece this i almost always have ink right now it's not because i think i let it rest for a second um but this pen i just toss it in my bag i don't have any issues with it it's very pretty to write with and it is very pretty i mean it's very beautiful to write with and it's very pretty to look at um this is at 12 centimeters or 4.7 inches you can use cartridges with this as well, or a converter. I think a Con 40 works for this, but I use a cartridge. And those pens that use cartridges are very portable because literally you just put your cartridge in. If you run out of ink, you don't need to bring ink bottles with you. So that's good. The next one is another vintage pen. This is another uh, pocket size fountain pen um, from the, roughly the same time as this one in the 1970s. And this is the Platinum Pocket Pen for Leaf Clover or Lucky for Leaf Clover. Um, I'm a little unsure as to what material the body is, but it does come, it's a slip cap, it does come with a gold nib. This is another 14 karat gold nib. And it is in very good condition. See, it's so nice and shiny still. It's a cartridge uh, converter pen. I think mostly a cartridge uh, pen. The um, platinum cartridges still work with these vintage uh, pens. So basically, I just get a syringe and I fill that in. It's not filled in right now. 
This one is 12 centimeters also and 4.7 inches. So same size, same size. Um, although it doesn't really quite look it, they are smaller than the Platinum 140. And um, last in the first set, and then we'll go just a little bit smaller, is another twist B. So we start with the twist B, and now we're going to have the uh, end end with another twist B. This is the twist B Diamond Mini or the twist B Diamond 530 in grape. It is a piston filler. It is a beautiful color. It's a recent release, if I'm not mistaken. This is a 2000. 23 release this color although the minis have been uh going around since 2012 sorry the nib is a steel nib okay and it, it has a plastic body it's also faceted so that it like stops the pen as well when it uh, rolls on the table if you don't have your cap so it's not really gonna roll much plus it adds to the prettiness of the pen. It is 12.1 centimeters long or 4.6 inches. So we started off with the longest one, um, the VAC Mini at 12.8 centimeters or about five inches. And we're ending with another twist B for the first set, which would be 12.1 uh, centimeters or 4.6 inches. So I'm just gonna put the rest away and then we're going to start with the second set and it's going to get smaller. All right, the next one is, so we started off with this one at 12.8 centimeters, five inches roughly. Then we ended with this one at um, four, sorry, 4.6 inches, about 12.8 centimeters. Our next one is at 11.3 centimeters, so a whole centimeter shorter. This is the Mont Blanc, um, Mont Blanc Jewelry, um, Meisterstock Mozart Jewelry in Platinum. And it is a very pretty pen. Okay, so it is Platinum, um, what's this? Platinum plated with the Matelassé pattern. It's a Mozart, so it's one of the shorter Mont Blancs. And it is just beautiful to write with. Okay, so this is 11.3 centimeters or 4.4 inches. Okay, so it is a bit of a jump. Then we have another Mont Blanc an even shorter one, and this is a Mont Blanc Bohème. This was released sometime in 2005. It has an 18 karat gold nib. It's a safety nib, so it kind of hides inside the body. It's a very pretty pen. It's one of my favorites. It has a special lacquer on the body, and it has a Nicoya pearl right there also has a very nice um, pattern on the body. Okay, um, this one is 11 centimeters or 4.3 inches. And it is a cartridge pen. So this and this, they're both cartridge pens. Again, wonderful to have cartridge pens with you because literally you can just throw in a cartridge in your, um, in your journal or in your your pencil case and when you run out of ink you just plug it in and then voila you're golden okay the next one in our list the next shorter one is the sailor pro gear slim mini yeah this is how the pro gear slim is okay it is at 12.3 centimeters about 4.85 inches and this is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini, 10.9 centimeters or roughly 4.3 inches. A little bit of a fun fact when it comes to the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini is that it was initially released sometime in um, 2011. And you know that you got the first release because when you post it, it has like a screw 
um, but the new release, which was in 2019, 2020, is a pressure post. So basically, you can just push it in. I pref prefer the one where I can screw it on, but I can't seem to find one. Um, this one is a, from its Marco series, the Air Grey. It comes with a 14 karat gold nib as well. Okay, it's also known as the Sapporo Mini. And it uses a special cartridge, but you can also use a converter with it. However, um, oh, okay, I don't know where my converter went. It's a special converter because it's for the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini. It's like a small one. The regular Sailor Pro Gear um, converters will not work with this one. So if I were you, i just use a cartridge for that. Then we have... Ah, a very popular one, the Cavecos, and this is one of their newer ones. This is the Caveco Bronze Sport. Um, it's heavier than the other Cavecos, and I do have quite a number of Cavecos because I do enjoy them. So let's just have a look. I have 10 Cavecos. Um, ooh, oh my goodness. No, okay. So <laughs> the Cavecos are about... 10.6 centimeters long, about 4.2 inches. Um, they're roughly the same length, all of them, but let me just go through them with you. This is the Macchiato, very pretty color. This was released in 2016. If I'm not mistaken, this is the old, oldest uh, color in my collection. Then we have the Navy, very nice dark blue. This was released 2018. Then we have the dark olive. Oh no, okay. So this is a 2021. Um, the vibrant violet is also a 2021. This has like, if I'm not mistaken, this is made with aluminum, the rest are plastic. Also, we have the iguana blue, another special release in matte. Very nice, this is 2022. Ruby Red is another 2022. It's kind of glossy, but also kind of matte. Very nice color. Then we have Mellow Blue, one of my favorites. This is plastic, also a 2022 release. Iridescent, another 2022 release. Iridescent Pearl. Then you have your Smooth Sage. So all of these are all 2022, suffice to say. I really like the 2022 colors. And that brings us to 10 Cavecos. Okay, so we are coming from, just as a short recap, because I had a lot to say about the others. We're coming from the Twispy Vac Mini at 12.8 centimeters or five inches. And then we went to the Twispy Grape, the Twispy Mini, which is 12 centimeters, roughly 4.6 centimeters. And now we are at the Caveco, roughly at 10.8 centimeters or 4.2 uh, inches long. Then we have the F Inks. This is a fountain pen that was made in the Philippines. So it's a, a Philippines-based fountain pen maker. It is one of my newer pens. It was released very recently this year. And it is uh, made with a, a titanium body. And the nib is stainless steel. It has a very distinct colorway. It's very light, looks quite robust, but it's actually a very light pen. It's also quite short, coming at 10 centimeters. It's even shorter than the Caveco. So this is 10 centimeters or maybe 3.9 inches uh, long. Then we have, okay, so this is our second half, right? Then we have our Mont Blanc. And this is the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir uh, Baby. And it is, um, sorry, it is inspired by the Mont Blanc Babies released sometime 1920. This one has a uh, lacquer finish on the body and it has a nice little nib with the Mont Blanc mountain right there. The nib is a 14 karat gold nib. It's a very soft nib. It's one of the softest nibs I've um, used and it's like soft without a lot of the supporting stiffness that I see in the Pelican 140. So you have to be quite careful when you use this. This is 9.9 .9 centimeters long, about 3.9 
inches. Okay, so this is where we are right now. This is the longest pocket size pen we have, and this is where we are with the shortest. We're gonna go and go even shorter. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so we are here right now. As your reference points, we have the longest pocket size pen. We have the ubiquitous Caveco, and then we have the shortest one from the previous um, selection that I shared. Before we continue to the smallest fountain pen that I have, I wanna let you know that there are two fountain pens in my collection that I didn't quite um, pit against everyone else here because they're still boxed, seriously. So I've had this for quite some time. Uh, this is the Traveler's Notebook Brass Fountain Pen. I got this because I thought it was very cute with that little ring top that you could carry around. I like the idea of developing patina on this, but so far I haven't needed to open this yet. So this is at 10.1 centimeters. So it's maybe around the Sailor Pro gear slim mini size okay um yeah it has a stainless steel nib and it's a cartridge uh pen again i'm really into cartridge pens when it comes to pocket pens because it's easier to fill them in um this is a cartridge pen as well the other one that i didn't include is the twisby go this is actually a little bit of a longer pen if I'm not mistaken, because I haven't unboxed it, so I'm not very sure, this is 13.4 centimeters, so it's going to be longer than our Twisby Vac Mini. But since it is roughly um, 5.3 inches, it'll still fit the average uh, shallower pocket of women, because men's have it deeper, apparently. Okay, so then let's move forward. Our next... Uh, pen in the collection would be our very cute Caveco Lilliput and this is in its fire blue colorway. Okay, so this one, as you can see, it's even shorter than your Mont Blanc baby. It was released sometime in 2016, although the Lilliput collection has been out since 2011. The body is made of steel but it is hand torched and so the colorway you can see there's some purple there's some blues there's a little bit of brown it's a very special colorway in the caveco collection it is 9.7 centimeters long or about 3.8 inches so it is quite short again this is where we started and this is where we are now next would be even shorter pocket pens although I have to say that one they are vintage two not all of them are working some need a bit of restoration so let's go and start with this Salisbury's Peter Pan and I do not know the material I think it is celluloid based on the research and as you can see, it really needs a lot of tender, loving care and restoration. But the nibs are 14 karat nibs, it's so tiny. And I also heard they're quite brittle. So yeah, and this is missing a few stones, but still they're in my collection and I do want to restore. Isn't that such a pretty colorway? These were released in 1920. And this particular one is um 8.3 centimeters long or 3.26 inches very far from our longest one the next one is yet another Salisbury's peter pan this one is in dark marble as you can see it's a lever filler but it has lost that part of it i don't know yeah this one also still has its nib but as you can see um, it needs a lot of care. Let me just scoot you in. Yeah, it's so small. Okay, it is a 14 karat nib though. And if you notice on top is like a 
ring top for them because you're meant to carry it around your neck, much like the traveler's notebook um, fountain pen that we have. And then another Peter Pan um, pen. This one is working. Again, I think this is made with a celluloid body. This one is restored. Look at the pen, so pretty and shiny. Um, I tried this, but I have to say that the lever filler doesn't have a lot of ink capacity. If you're just gonna jot down quick notes, I think it'll work, but because it does allow a little bit of flex, which I uh, guiltily did, um, I say guilty because I ran out of ink really quick when I did that. So I think for this pen or any Salisbury's, if I get these restored, it will mostly be dip pens because it doesn't hold enough. So these two are roughly the same lengths. They're both eight centimeters long or about 3.1 inches. And the last in our collection is yet another Salisbury's, but look at how tiny it is. It's not a lever filler, it is an eyedropper. It has its lovely little ring top. And again, I think this is celluloid. And look at how tiny it is. Okay, let's move it up for you. There we go. Okay, this tiny one is 5.5 centimeters or 2.16 inches long. This also needs a little bit of restoration. So. Um, with all these four, this is the only one that is working quite well. But look at that, look at the range. So again, for comparison, oops, let me just fix myself up a bit. Um, okay, let's just remove some of these and let's go for these. So you have this, which is the longest pocket pen I have in my collection, five inches. Then you have your ubiquitous Caveco, which would be about 4.25 inches. And you have a tiny one, which is a Peter Pan. You have that in eight centimeters or 3.1 inches. And then you have the tiniest one at 2.16 inches or 5.5 centimeters. What a huge range of pocket-sized fountain pens for us. So if we remove that, that's basically how it looks. No wonder people are a bit confused. What would make a pocket, uh, a fountain pen pocket-sized? Uh, well, I just base it on the depth because this is a possible range for it. Although I have to say at this point, it's no longer a pocket pen. I think it's more like a pendant pen, but wonderful. Five inches, 2.16 inches. This is even less than half the size of this. Okay, so now I'd like to share with you just a few interesting bits. We'll talk about uh, the longest and the shortest, which I've shared with you. Then we'll talk about uh, the oldest and the more current one, the price, the most expensive and the cheapest one, and then a few special mentions. So shortest to longest, you've already seen the shortest, you've already seen the longest in the collection. Um, just to, yeah, and you've seen the whole range of it. Then let's go for the each of the pens. So the, let me just go for the newer ones. One of the newer ones would be the gray. That's one of the newer ones. And the Caveco bronze. Okay. And the newest one is our FX. So they're all, if I'm not mistaken, all 2023 pens. Then you have the older pens. One happens to be our shortest pen as well. You have your Peter Pan at 1920. But we also have a few older pens like your Pelican, which is a 1952. And our, where is that? Ah. 
the Platinum Four Leaf, which is at 1973. The Pilot Mew is just a tiny bit newer than um, the Platinum uh, Four Leaf Clover. And then when we look at price range, okay, when we look at, okay, it's just so you can see our older ones and our newer ones. Okay, then when you look at price range, let's go for the least expensive one. So we of course have, let me just get my pens down. We of course have the cheapest one, which would be our Jin Hao at $7. Then we have our Twist We Go, which I included for the price range. Okay, but I haven't unboxed it, so we'll just put that aside. Um, that is at uh, $20, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have our Cavecos, especially those made of plastic, which would take you back about $26. Uh, dollars. So these are our cheaper ones. The more expensive ones would be our Mont Blancs. We have our tribute to Mont Blanc. Oh, here it is. Our tribute to Mont Blanc. This is a Mont Blanc Meister Stock Mozart tribute to Mont Blanc. And then we have our Mont Blanc Meister Stock Mozart uh, Jewelry Platinum. Um, and we also have our Bohem, the Mont Blanc Bohem Lacquer Pearl. Though I have to say, that generally speaking this seems to be a tad more expensive than this depending on where you buy it this one has like huge range you can get it for i don't know i've seen the lowest at 600 us and the highest at about 2000 uh, us this one is about a thousand us so this is the range is there a difference in how they write? Of course there's a difference, but it's more uh, from the feeling as a writer than the final product. Though I have to say, every time I get a Jin Hao, I have to tweak it. That is a bit of an issue for me. Okay, and so I think that's about it when it comes to the range. I just wanna share a few of my favorites. For example, my very first pocket pen in my collection is the Caveco Mellow Blue. This is where I fell in love with pocket-sized fountain pens. This is the culprit. And then my favorites in terms of how often I write with them or how I just enjoy writing with them, it would be the Mozart, so it'd be this, and the Pelican 140. Um, this one, I suppose, because I use it a lot for poetry writing, uh, but this one, I like it because of the flex. It's not really a flex pen, but because of how soft it is, it becomes this really wonderful flex pen writer. The one that I have um, the most of would be my Caveco, simply because there are a lot of Cavecos to choose from, so I have 10 of those. Um, my most surprising pen, this one I wanted to share. I know I have a video of this, but I'm just gonna put this in too. This is one of my most surprising pens because it's only 10 um, centimeters long, which would make it even shorter than your Caveco. But this F Inks 22 Tiger 5, when you uncap it and post it, it magically becomes this full-size pen that is very comfortable to write with. And of course I got it in a flex or omni flex nib. Okay, so it's not a full flex, but it's quite a nice uh, elastic there. That's what you call it in elastic nibs. It's nice to write with, it's a bit bouncy. Okay, so again, it's wonderful because of how small it is and then how it becomes so big, like a standard size pen. And then my most used pens would be, on, like almost always inked, would be my Mozarts because I have them in my um, poetry kit so it's either this or this although I tend to use this more however right now this is inked and my pilot new because it's so light and I don't know I don't feel like I can scratch it so much 
and it's easy to refill. So basically I just plug a cartridge in every time it runs out of ink and then I simply just throw it in my bag. And that is about it for my collection. And I hope that you enjoyed a little bit of it. I hope you were able to compare and um, sort of, um, I was able to sort of answer some of your questions when it comes to fountain pens and pocket-sized fountain pens. And now, okay, and then here I wanna share with you some of the more noteworthy ones in the collection. Okay, so this is Kai from Kikai Craft. I hope you had a great time just going through all these pens with me. Um, and wherever you are, I hope you have a great day or a restful evening. Bye everyone!